Hello everyone, it's a college football guy here with another video. Well, man, I took a bath yesterday. I went one and four, because apparently, yeah, let me read the shirt. Hey, you dropped this? Yeah, I think I dropped my brain making my predictions. Uh, one and four. So when we get into the predictions here, I'm doing a video right after this one in case somebody wants to know. It's going to be the, my top 25 predictions, as well as the subscriber games, including a Quinn Era's injury update, which... Uh, get into in the next video but anyway let's get into this one real quick the friday reviews five games happen here and we'll go <laughs> in order it was first out the first four games i was over on all four of them so here i'm talking about here the Tulane game Tulane versus houston Tulane beat houston 27 to 24 in overtime two things about this houston is there are they the biggest disappointment in the group of five because i mean i'm looking at this going like you guys were supposed to be so good and now you've turned so bad and Tulane. Could they, in a sense, be a team of destiny? When you hear the story of what happened in this game today, if you watched the game, you did. Under, I had a chance to catch highlights. I couldn't catch the game. But, uh, yeah. So, I'm going to get into the story here, the stats. I got my lovely paper up here for the stats here. Let's start with the Houston stats since they lost. The losers first, winners second. But, you know, Houston, you know, Clayton Toon, the starting quarterback, 22 of 33, 208 yards, two TDs, no INTs, 63.1 QBR. Not bad. Team rushing of 48 carries for 175 yards and a touchdown. The defense had two sacks, didn't force an INT. But the closest this game may have been with his backs of their kicker. He was one for three on field goals. 27-24. That could have been the difference in the game. But the two lane here. Okay. Michael Pratt, who was the two lane starting quarterback, was declared out, scratched out of the game due to injury. So Justin Abietta, I believe his name is, he was a redshirt freshman quarterback, got his first ever career start in this game. Went 5-for-5 five for, five for 57 yards, and then he got knocked out doing his first ever rush. So he went out of the game. So that means the third-string quarterback, Kai Horton, came in. Third stringer. Tulane won this game, folks. Kai Horton went 11-for-21. 132 yards. Three touchdowns. No INTs. Including a 10-yard TD in overtime to Ty J. Sparks to win the game. He had a 55.3 QBR. The team rushing for the game... 28 carries for 84 yards, didn't have a touchdown, but Ty J. Sparks was the game, was the offense for Tulane. 14 carries for 54 yards, most in, led the team in rushing, along with six six receptions for 85 yards, including that game-winning catch in overtime. And their defense had two sacks and didn't have an INT, and their kicker also missed a field goal, but I think those backs of two field goals is the difference in this game here, as well as you, you have your third-string quarterback play out of his mind 11 out of 21 and 32, three touchdowns. That's not a great performance, but you still dug it out, scratched it out, and won it. Is Houston falling apart, or is Tulane perhaps a little team of destiny for a little bit? Hmm. We'll see about that one. Next game up, again, another game I barbecued on. Texas San Antonio at Middle Tennessee State. After Chase Cunningham's 400 yards they had against Miami, I figured he was going to have a good game. Well, in a sense, he did. We'll get to Chase's stats here. His QBR doesn't reflect it, but he was 35 for 56. 365 yards with one touchdown. A lot of drops. One touchdown, no picks. A lot of drops. 39.3 QBR. Team rushing for 18 carries for 84 yards and one touchdown. The defense had three sacks and three picks. So the defense kept them in it, but they're just dropping passes. Then Texas San Antonio. Frank Harris was the story of this game, folks. 27 of 36. For a school record, 414 yards, two touchdowns and three picks. But he also rushed for 12 carries for 31 yards and two rushing touchdowns. So he had a game. He had a 93.5 QBR. Team Texas San Antonio as a whole, team rushing, 45 carries for 167 yards and four touchdowns. And Texas San Antonio's defense only had one sack and no picks. So this was the story of a quarterback's receivers catching the ball and versus ones who didn't. There's no reason MTSU got in this game. They had a lot of drops and a lot of bad throws. Also by Chase, I can't deny that. They had bad throws in this game, but that's how they lost that one. Now we're going to get into Boise State against San Diego State. Boise State wins 35-13. to You know San Diego State was up 13 and nothing at half, and then Boise State scored 35 unanswered. Hank Bachmeyer, their starting quarterback, the guy who I thought was a senior who's going to be a guy who was going to be the one to try to pick Boise State to win the Mountain West because he was going to be a good quarterback, and he is. He, before the start of the year, he decided to transfer. Then it's up on the transfer portal. So now you've got two freshman quarterbacks from Boise State. 
but that's just but I'm going to get into that. We'll get into San Diego State. And San Diego State had their own problems. You have back, you know, Braxton Burmeister, who is the Virginia Tech transfer, came in. He had, you know, he was he was he got injured in the third quarter. He was two for eight for 32 yards and an INT with 13.7 QBR. Their backup, um, Umavai was his backup. He's a he's a freshman. He came in to back him up. He also got injured. So ended up being Crumb being also another freshman came in to back him up. All three QBs combined, two for 16, 33 yards, and a pick. In other words, the other two quarterbacks were 0 for 8 with one yard. Or for, excuse me, 0 for 8, yeah, 0 for 8, yeah, 33 yards. Yeah, 0 for 8, no yards, no picks. Golly. And they were 35 carries for 81 yards, no touchdowns. The team defense for San Diego State, one sack, one pick. It was a defensive game in the first half, and then the floodgates opened up. So it was Taylor Green who was the, declared the starting quarterback, and then Sam Vidlak came in. Sam Stats, he came in. He had a, he was nine for twelve for eighty six yards, no touchdowns, no, no ints, thirty eight point two QBR. But Taylor Green, the starter, five for ten, forty eight yards in the pick, but eight carries for one hundred and five yards rushing and two rushing touchdowns, seventy five point five QBR. Team as a whole was the story of this game. Was their rushing forty four carries, three hundred and sixteen yards, and five touchdowns. All their touchdowns came on the ground. George Halani threw in 17 carries for 131 yards and two TDs. And their team defense, San Diego, I mean, Boise State's defense had three sacks and a pick. So it was basically the tale of two halves. A defensive story for the first half, and then they just couldn't hold them back anymore. The injuries kicked in. Burmeister got hurt in the third quarter, and the wheels fell off. That was basically that at that point. Now we're getting to the fourth game I got wrong. <laughs> UCLA beats Washington. 40, number 15th ranked Washington, 40 to 32. So, what happened to Washington? Well, quarterback who I've been kind of high on, I kind of like Michael Penix Jr., played for Washington. He was 33 of 48 for 345 yards, four TDs, but two picks. 67.7 QBR. Team rushing 23 carries for 65 yards, no touchdowns. But, uh, Roma Dunze was the main receiver. He had eight receptions for 116 yards, and he caught two touchdowns. Team defense for Washington, one sack, no picks. But UCLA, this may have been the arrival officially of Dorian Thompson-Robinson. He had a monster game. 24-33, 315 yards, three TDs, 92.8 QBR. Team rushing of 39 carries for 184 yards and a touchdown led by... I think it was three... Actually, it was... I uh, myself wrong here. A touchdown led by Zach Charbonnet, who had, 30, had a... 22 carries, 124 yards and a TD, and the team defense had two sacks and two picks. They had a, a team defense game, and the rush ran the ball, you know, passed well. Dorian, hey, welcome to the big time, kid. And now let's talk about the last game, the only one I got right. UNLV beat New Mexico 31-20. to This was one guy versus UNLV. Miles Kendrick, the quarter, starting quarterback for... Mexico, 13 of 25 for 163 yards, no touchdowns, two picks, 30.2 QBR. Team rushing, 35 carries for 114 yards and two touchdowns. Of those 35 carries and 114 yards and two TDs, Miles Kendrick had eight carries for 30 yards and both TDs. He was the offense. Team defense had two sacks and a pick. UNLV, Doug Brumfield. 24-33 for 233 yards, didn't throw a touchdown, did throw a pick, 55.3 QBR, but he had eight carries for 19 yards and a touchdown. Team rushing-wise, they had 34 carries for 123 yards and two TDs. They had one sack and two picks. This was basically a case of not making mistakes and being careful with the ball, although Brumfield did have some picks. And UNLV won, but Dorian, you came out, my friend. You came out and had a ball game, so... Any of those games that I just mentioned on Friday surprised any of you? Please let me know down in the comments. As always, please like, comment, share. All that helps the channel, helps the analytics, helps it grow out. Check the video out on those. And if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get this channel to become something. So right after this video, I'm going to record another one, which is going to be the top 25 preview for the games today, as well as the subscriber games to so some other ones of interest notes on there, including the Quinn Ewers update, which I'll get to. But hey, everybody, thanks, everybody, for watching this video. As everybody, please... Ian's met Hurricane Ian is not done. Your tropical storm Ian is not done yet. So please, everyone, be safe.
too much lost already. So thank you everyone for watching the video. As always, please be good to each other.